Good morning, Leapers. It's great to be there at your conference this morning, even in an embodiment. Um, and I'm not sure which part of the world I'm in, hence the Where's Wally theme. But it is the major theme of your conference is about collective efficacy. And certainly a big hello also to Jenny Donahue, who I know is going to be a key part of your conference over the next two days. This topic is really quite an exciting topic. Over the last many years, as I've written and kept the research going on visible learning, I keep adding new influences. And the major reason I do that is that I want to be the first in the world to say I'm wrong. Because if something comes up, for example, that shows class size has a huge effect, I want to be out there and say my model is wrong. Now so far, that hasn't happened. But a couple of years ago, when a new meta-analysis came out on teacher collective efficacy, and it went to the new number one, it was very comforting. It was very comforting because it supported all the arguments that the, the visible learning research has been trying to say over the last many years. And I think that's a really important part of the theme, is that it is part of the big story. It's not a thing just by itself. And since then, a lot of people have got a, a lot of interest in this topic. Now, let's be clear. To do a meta-analysis on collective efficacy, there needed to be studies. This is not a new notion. This has been around a long time. There's been a lot of studies out there that have looked at the collective efficacy in schools. But since it's become the new number one, there's been quite a number of books that have been written on this topic. And it seems to be my new job is to take those books and to write a forward or to write an endorsement. And on seven of eight of them, I've refused to do that because they missed the point. A couple of them, including the one by Jenny, who's with you today, is outstanding because they got the message right. So let me talk about this notion of teachers' collective efficacy. It comes back to groups of teachers working together, fed with their evidence of impact. One of the not meanings of collective efficacy is when teachers get together and talk about kids, about curriculum, about resources. That's not the point at all. And it's not just growth mindsets, rah, rah, let's feel good. That's not the message either. This is hard work. This is getting together and understanding how we're going to have impact on students. I'm sure many of you have read the Gonski report that came out a few weeks ago. And it talked about how we can get teachers to talk about a year's growth for a year's input. That's a major focus of teacher collective efficacy. What does that mean? It doesn't mean effect sizes or test scores. It means judgments, interpretations, and how can we do that as a team to understand what a year's growth looks like in the school with these students. Yes, it's very much related to high expectations. And as Christine Ruby Davies work has shown, teachers do have expectations for the students and they tend to either have high or low expectations. It's not true that they have different expectations for boys or girls or for different kinds of kids. If they have high expectations, they tend to have it for all students. And if teachers have high expectations, they're more likely to realize them. Whereas the teacher down the corridor that may have low expectations, unfortunately, they are also extremely successful at realizing low expectations. So what are those expectations? What does that year's growth look like across the teachers in your school and across your schools? How can you look at having those understandings of what you expect over a 10 to 12 week period? Bringing along artifacts of students' work over 10 to 12 weeks and saying, is this reasonable growth to expect? And this is putting meat around that sandwich of what a year's growth looks like. It's putting meaning around this notion of what teachers' collective efficacy looks like. And it's having that very strong belief and action that I cause learning. I am the reason why students learn. And I know that sometimes teachers are so nice and they give the credit to the students and say, oh, the students did the work or the parents supported them or the resources were right or the principal gave me the right time. No, I want every one of you in the room today to say, I cause learning. Because the evidence in visible learning shows that we have an incredible number of teachers that are having that wonderful impact on students and are enabling their students to gain 
more than a year's growth for a year's impact because of what they do. And the evidence in the visible learning research shows that we have an incredible number of teachers who are having that impact where their students are gaining more than a year's growth for a year's input. And that recognition needs to be part of the teacher's collective efficacy. When we stop and say it was something that we did, because that expertise is so critical in terms of making sure that our funders, our politicians, our parents realise that the expertise of those teachers and those collective efficacy groups are the reason why our kids are having so much success. One of the other things is we have um, in my team here in our science of learning at, at Melbourne is looking at the notion of the collective wisdom of the crowd. And you know the notion that a crowd, a group of people are more likely to make a difference than the individual. It's a very seductive notion. It's very, very hard to find the evidence to support it. In many cases, it's kind of like a pub quiz. A group is as bright as the brightest person in the group. And so when you look at that research to say, when do crowds make a difference? When do groups make a difference? There are some skills, not only in the individuals, but also in the group itself. And it comes back to a very, very simple notion. The most important skill to get that collective wisdom. Let me give you a hint. The number of proportion of females in the group the wisdom of the crowd goes up. I can see a few of you smiling at that. The number of turn taking, the more turn taking there is, the higher the collective wisdom goes up. But they're proxies, they're correlates of what really matters, and that is social sensitivity. Do our teachers have the social sensitivity to hear other teachers, to be empathetic and walk in their shoes? Because without that, collective efficacy is not very successful. And sadly, sometimes our very best teachers just want to be left alone, back in their classroom, their door closed, get on with their work. And on the one hand, isn't that wonderful? On the other hand, we need those teachers as part of our collective efficacy groups. And this notion of social sensitivity screams loudly to the importance of the leader of the group. How does the leader of the group ensure that there is appropriate turn taking, that there is appropriate sensitivity? that teachers are listening to other teachers and providing feedback to other teachers. It's kind of like the work I was involved in many years ago in, in counselling with Carl Rogers and how he talked about the most important thing is not to just listen to your client, but to demonstrate you have listened to your client. It's the same notion in collective efficacy. When a teacher talks, do other teachers, can they say back what they've heard? Is this what you mean? Is this how you understand it? And how do you get good leaders to make sure that kind of turn taking and that kind of empathy happens? And so my message is that as you go through your LEAP conference over these next days, how do you build the schools, skills to get collective efficacy working? It doesn't just happen by getting groups of teachers together. It must have an agenda. And that agenda, I would implore you to have it about the impact of the teachers on the students and using the evidence of that impact to justify why you're doing this rather than that. I ask you to think about the skills of the participants to work together. I ask you to think about the skills of the leader and how you're going to get that efficacy group working. How you're going to get the evaluation to make sure that the group does have that collective impact that we're looking at. Because if it is, as it is, the new number one in the whole visible learning, and it sits atop many of those big ideas that in that visible learning work, it's really important that we use the opportunity that I hope is coming all our ways to create the teams, to get the work going, and we use it in a way to truly put into action that collective efficacy. And we can say at the end that the collective of teachers in the school, the collective of educators in the school, are walking together and having the kind of impact that our students need and deserve so that every student in the school, no matter where, do they, where they start, is gaining that year's growth for that year's impact. So have a very enjoyable two days. Enjoy listening to Jenny and learning from the work she's doing and from the other presenters around this most important topic. And I very much look forward to hearing from Warren and Sue about the success that you've had over the two days at this LEAP conference. Go Leapers! <laughs>